too. And uh, we're also yes, streaming on YouTube. We're streaming on um, Facebook. My Facebook usually is where the largest of our audience are. Um, and so we're, we're, we are streaming on that Facebook. Oh, TV. Um, and then at Steve Akita TV also on YouTube. We're free to share the link with your loved ones so that they can watch this. Steve Akita, can you hear me, please? You know. Um, can we all mute ourselves, please? Everybody, we get to the time where we all have the opportunity to speak. And before you talk, can you please? Okay, I'll give you three minutes. We appreciate if you um, just um, type a comment first. So if you want to say something, type a comment. I'm going to be checking the comment section. Um, please, let's not just interject. You can type something on the comment section and we'll pick your conversation. I want to welcome everybody and thank you again for coming. God bless you for your patriotism. I want to start today's show by saying the NSAS movement actually is what has brought about the most, pro uh, uh, um, the most patriotic movement in Nigeria's history. One of the major mistakes that we have been making is thinking that our forefathers who started Nigeria were united. They actually were not. The Saudana was speaking for the North, Azikwe was speaking for the uh, East, and Aulo was speaking for Southwest. And so this division we're inheriting had been there from day one. And this answers, and that's why there was so much, uh, the political class hated it because it was the first time we're not talking religion. It was the first time we're not talking tribalism. Nigerians were united home and abroad against ending police brutality. But it was more than that. We also wanted an end to bad governance. And it was obvious that the movement was moving gradually from NSAS to NJOBOPE to National Assembly members. And Senate was gradually going to move to, of course, provide power, was gradually going to move to give electricity, it was going to move to other major important aspects and issues that are key to our growth and development as a nation. And um, we saw how the usual method in being used during election where they hire talks and use those talks to go ahead and of course, make sure they truncate the will of the people and use those talks to make the rightful voters to be scared to even go and vote. I don't know if you noticed that the last election 2019 they use talks to scare people, okay, from going to vote. If you notice that, just type, I notice, I notice. Right now, again, this same strategy is what the government and politic politicians are trying to use. Push out talks, everybody's scared, and then the entire movement is dead. I also, I want to condemn the arson, looting, going on. We are not criminals, we are not looters. When you look at the civil rights movement, why it worked was that Martin Luther King was leading a peaceful revolution. A peaceful revolution, it cost him his life at some point, but that was why in 2008, what he saw eventually came to pass, even though it's still far from what we needed. You can begin to see that uh, um, you know, people are no longer gradually no longer being judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Like I said again, racism is far from being over, way way far from being over. But Martin Luther King dream is gradually coming to pass. It was a peaceful revolution. Malcolm X was not willing to lead any peaceful revolution, and we can see how. History is not as kind to Malcolm X like the way it has been kind to Dr. Martin Luther King. Now, tonight, we all we have 
um, as many of us as we can, we have opportunity to discuss what is the way forward. Answers. What is the way forward? Remember again the vision, and please let's not get um, carried away. Let's not get distracted. It was a peaceful movement. Who led to the shooting? Who ordered the shooting in Lekki? I don't care whether anybody died or not. I believe people died. And I'm not going to let them drag us into that conversation of where's the evidence? Did somebody die? Did somebody not die? It doesn't matter. Who ordered the shooting at Lekki? Was it right to go and shoot okay, where peaceful protesters are, even if nobody died? Was it the right thing to do? Is the reward for, for disobeying curfew shooting live ammunition at peaceful protesters? And that's the real issue here. We have been dragged. They've attempted to drag us into tribal war. It's not working so far, even though there were pockets of violence that, that almost generated. They, were, they have tried to drag us into religious war. They have realized they have not succeeded so far, even though there were little issues here and there. In Some monks were born in Port Harcourt. Uh, but it has not, they have not succeeded using that method still. Okay. They've also tried to, you know, push out these informations out there and get them youth to be distracted. And to start, okay, who died? People not die. Okay. Somebody died. Did somebody not die? All that. Please, we are muting everybody. Okay. Mute yourself as you join. When it's time for you to talk, you will be unmuted. But please let me have this intro. So, and the reason why I'm giving this intro is that I do not want anybody to please come here and speak beyond what we are trying to discuss. Is answers way forward? It was a non-violent movement. Okay. And if you are asking for a violent movement, please go and organize your own town hall. This is a conversation about the real vision of the answers, which was non-violent. What is the way forward? Okay, uh, how do we stay united? And remember, how do we then navigate this conversation to other major important things that we want to fight for? Good governance, okay? Um, how do we make sure that we can channel this conversation into 2023? Young people must rule in this country. They must run this country. People who are about to die cannot be determining our destiny. Enough is enough, right? You cannot be telling, bringing people who are close to the grave, okay, to come and start determining the future of Nigeria. It won't work. We are not taking it. You have constituted a panel of inquiry, and then you put old people there, okay? Youth are supposed to be 50% of all those panel of inquiry, and they are supposed to be co-chair. Stop painting us as irresponsible people. Stop painting us as though we don't know what we're doing. Stop painting us as if we are thugs, we are hooligans, we are looters. And that's what they are trying to do. It's not working so far. And it won't work. We are not looters. We are not thugs. We are, we are very organized people. We know what we're doing. We, even the thugs that came to disrupt the movement were later being fed and they all calmed down. So, there are young people who could co-chair all the panel of inquiry to investigate all the killings, extrajudicial killings that have gone on. There are young people who could co-chair it. So you can't just say, we give you one slot. Then later, oh, okay, we will give you two slots. Are you kidding me? 50% of the composition must be young people. We must begin to demand right now, any governor that is in their first term that will not make their Minister, uh, commissioners, 50% youth out. We are voting you out next election. These are the conversations we need to start talking about. This energy needs to be moved towards a political change that begins to bring in young people, that begins to get young people to be at the seat of discussion at the table. Because let me tell you the truth if we are not at the table, to determine our own destiny. So then we, we can't have a headway. I spoke to somebody, a young person in his 30s in the APC government this morning. And I said to him, why didn't you talk to these leaders? 
What's going on? You're also part of the government. Of course, it's not that high, but you are in this government. And he said, you won't believe it. I don't understand this. Even the little he, dis he said through his social media handle, they were already castigating him. That who is he standing for? And that no government official needs to say anything. And that, that you know, and he's above his pay grade. He's just a, you know, just one committee that they put him as a member. So young people have to get, and during the election, by the way, this person I'm talking about was one of the top guys they were asking questions for, you know, was the one they want to ask, how do we go here? How do we penetrate here? Now they entered. They gave him one small portfolio, right? And told him, you are a small boy, you cannot shout. Even the protests, they kept telling him they should not support those protests. Those people are rebels. And the reason why all this continues is because we are not at the table. So way forward is what we are discussing. I want to thank you once again for coming. I want to really appreciate everyone. And we'll gradually now open the lines and everybody start talking uh, one by one. Now, these are the rules. If you want to say something, you want to kindly tell us your name. Okay, kindly tell us your name, as well as the direction of your conversation. And you can use the word unmute me. Okay, so three things I need to see. Number one, your name. If you can add the city you are joining us from. Uh, number three, the direction you want to go in your conversation, e.g., grassroots, e.g., uh, uh, mobilization, e.g., uh, whatever. Just type just one sentence, your direction of conversation, and then you can then last word on mute me. Okay, put all that in one word, please. Put it all together, um, and then we'll bring you up to have conversation. Lastly, I also want to say, please, we young people of Nigeria needs to get all these thugs also involved. Thugs are human beings too. If we do not get the thugs, you know, on board and talk to them and get them to become civil and get them to participate without selling their votes for 2,000, 1,000, we will lose this battle. We need to enter those streets. Some of you, I mean, some of you are too tush to enter the street. You need to enter the street. Go to Ajegule, go to the suburb, talk to them. You may not, not smoke Igbo, but your brain is correct. And talk to them. Speak in the language they will understand. If you don't know how to connect to them, get somebody else who knows the street to go with you. We need to start talking to these people. Enough of them being used to truncate the destiny of this nation. Enough, enough. So Taufik is the first person I'm unmuting. How are you? Good morning. I mean, good evening. Please go ahead. Taufik Fashino. I've unmuted you. Please go ahead and you can unmute yourself. Please remember every the four things I asked you to say, add them in one post, please. One post. Okay, good evening, Taufik. sir. Yes, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, my name is Fatima. So I'm, I'm speaking from Abulegba, Lagos State. Uh, so my, I, I just want to focus on um, educating and sensitization of our youth. Uh, it is obvious that everybody knows what we want, and what we want is good governance. Good governance that emanates from you know, the youth taking control of what we want and being able to participate you know, in the governance to ensure that, you know, all activity are done accordingly with accountability and responsibility. Because what we are seeing right now is high level of, you know, activity not being accounted for. And our leaders, they are not ready to take responsibility, you know, of good governance in Nigeria. And that is why it is important for us right now to create a network because I think the first thing to do is to get, to know to have a network of people that can educate, sanitize, and provide directions. Because you know, as much as we have a lot of people, a lot of youth that have vision, tenacity, courage to take positions to lead, so also we have a lot of people that, because of what they want to hit, because of unemployment because of you know, the way their pocket is, 
they could not actually envision the kind of Nigeria that we want. And the first thing to do is to bring everybody into say, to, 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 to the same page because we should not be ruled by what we want to eat. We should be, we should act. So we should not act based on what we want to eat. We should act based on our vision, what we want to achieve. So, and if this message does not get to the grassroots, does not get to everybody, for everybody to be on board, work on the same direction, the same goal, the same vision, this will not be achieved. So my emphasis is to create a network where we can educate, sensitize, bring people on board, create vision, and let people be able to follow it. And I'm very, I, I know, I, I strongly believe that we can achieve this, you know, by taking things, uh, you know, taking hold of our, our future on our. Really? I think I, I see this as yes because, so because of time, because of time I'm, I'm going to pause you there but I agree with you 110 percent we need to start sensitization at the local level right I mean grassroots uh, level also please so that we don't lose our audience anybody who is speaking your video needs to be on please your video needs to be on. Uh, anybody who is speaking, we need that so that we don't lose our audience. Our audience wants to see your face, um, you know, and it's important. So next person I'm bringing up, uh, again, because of time, let's all make sure uh, we speak, if possible, 30 seconds or one minute. Uh, next person is Edward. Um, Edward, please go ahead. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, my name is Edward, 26-year-old um, professional in Lagos. And the thing is, is from my own end, I've seen a lot of young people my age that are pushing for this revolution, that are pushing for these changes in Nigeria. But one thing that I feel that we sometimes don't get is that it's not, it's not only the educated ones that can get this right. We need the help of these people that these politicians use during election. Mm -hmm. we to educate the common guy on the road. We need to educate that agbero, those conductors, those bus drivers. We need to educate them. They need to see the vision that we also have. They need to see that Nigeria cannot go on, continue like this. They need to see that the 1,000, 1,500 we give them, that these guys give them, is, is not going to put, get them to the promised land. They need to see that Nigeria can be bigger than what they are seeing right now. So when we, when, when, we, when we organize this kind of protest, we cannot just segment them out. We cannot just put them by the side. We need to carry them along. We need to educate these guys on the road. That is my solution. I believe that nationwide education, right, at a grassroots level, to all those people that, 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 we, that we seemingly um, look down on, we need to educate these guys. They need to see, because at the end of the day, if you don't do this, this right this time around, by 2023, they're going to put out money and give the same guys. The same guys will come out with guns and machetes and send us away from polling boots. So we need to educate them. That's no solution. Thank you very much. That's a powerful one. So it's still um, similar to the sensitization of the first speaker. So next person is a make easy. Please go ahead. Emeka Eze from Delta State. Go ahead. You can mute yourself, Emeka Eze. After Emeka Eze, I'm going to be having Emmanuel Jojo. So if you have posted earlier, I didn't see you can post again. And then after Emeka, um, after Jojo, we're going to be having our first female, Yohan Day Grace. Yes, go ahead, Emeka Eze. Hello, Emeka Eze, are you there? Okay, if Emeka Eze is not there, let's have Jojo. Jojo, go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Hello. Go ahead. Hello, can you all hear me? Go ahead. Go ahead. 
Hello. Go ahead, Kaize. Go ahead. Hello, can you hear me now? Go ahead. We'll be hearing you. Okay. I'm speaking on uh, mobilization. You know, in Nigeria right now, you cannot do anything without leadership. When there is no leadership, you find that there's no direction. So I would strongly suggest that we should have a delegate in each state. In each of the states in Nigeria, we should have a delegate, someone who helps to mobilize the people, sensitize the people, and let them know the importance of what we are doing. For us to take over leadership is not just going to be by just saying it. There must be an action. And that action begins by having a delegate, someone we can, you know, call up, call up to ask him, how is the place? How is the people? Are they responding? Someone we can actually financially mobilize to help, you know, equip the people, sensitize them. Mm. Where we can we shall have a platform where we can contribute, and that contribution will be used to empower our delegates who will then move to the grassroots, do a sensitization program, you know, enlightening the people on the importance of leadership. Why every youth must be involved in politics. This is very important. And when we do this, you find that we'll be able to achieve our goal. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you for your comment. Awesome. Jojo, are you there? If you're there, go ahead. You're next. Okay. So the next person is a lady. Please go ahead. I mean, if I mention your name, can you just go ahead? Okay. Good evening, house. Good evening. My name is Phoebe Ishola Mustafa. Um, I stay in Lagos, and I'm a business and system analyst. I'm going to give you practical example of what I've done. I stay in Abuli Egba, and I will tell you two areas that I have very great influence. And how did I do it? During the COVID-19, the little, anytime my husband gives me money, I will slash it into two. And I will take half of the money and buy, if it's just a loaf of bread, two uh, pieces of indomie with six pieces of egg. Asking Abuli Egba, they don't know me by name, but they know the woman with the red car. I will go into the streets and I will give it to them. That way, if they are fighting and I pass by and I say, guys, don't do it, they stop, they won't. Another influence I have is in Abatua markets where I have all Ausa boys. When I enter the market, you will see people ailing me from one angle or another. Do you know what I've done to these people? I go there, I make the Ausa brother know that you are my brother. That before we talk about ethnicity, ethnicity, before we talk about religion, you are my brother first. So enough of us saying, oh, let us start sensitizing. Let us start practicalizing it. In your little area, in the area where you are, start doing it now. Start influencing that act bureau. You won't believe that 500 naira can do a lot. The day I have 1,000, I will split into 200 naira, call five people, sit down with them, and tell them, don't sell your vote during election. When they ask you to bring guns, don't do it. Can they give you their daughter or their son to marry? That way, we will have influence over people. And another thing that I think we can do is data gathering. There was one thing I, I did in my constituency, in my state, in other states. I went to my constituent and I tried to do a data collection. I want to know every street in that constituency. I want to know every house in that constituency. I want to know every house owner in that constituency. I tell you, from my house, 
I will speak to everybody in my constituency because I have data. In mm. our area, let's start working towards data collection. I can call the ballet of anywhere because I gather them, I introduce myself to them through data. Every house on my, in my constituency I know, every street in my constituency I know, every house owner in my constituency I know. It cost me a lot of money to do that data gathering, but I did it and I have it. And I wonder that politicians that are killing themselves trying to mobilize vote. From the corner of my room, I will mobilize the little things I can do, I do. So more than anything, data gathering might seem a lot, but if we all do our part, little by little, we will gather this data. The, this Agbero, we will know them. I will tell you the head of the Agbero on that bridge, Abuli Egba, because I relate with these people. Let us start talking to them. Day to day, feel what we are doing. But because these politicians, we come with little, little money. And because every angry man needs to feel themselves for a day, they collect it. But if we do our grassroots sensitization, we might be able to win a lot on our side. So my contribution is that we start doing data gathering. And I'm willing to offer my services for free to any, any group. Like I agree with what Jojo said. We need a form of leadership. Leadership in different sectors, in different areas, different locations. Let us start driving towards a goal. We need data gathering so that when we have this data, effortlessly we will be able to sensitize these talks. That's my contribution. Thank you, House. Thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, fantastic. I love the uh, feminine energy here. Um, so we're going to have next um, Elizabeth, no, um, let me see, Emmanuel Archie. Emmanuel Archie. Emmanuel Archie. Um, one, one of the things that I want to say as Emmanuel Archie comes up is for now, we just needed to have this conversation because some of you will be saying, so what are we doing? Let's talk, Abby, because we are, we are beginning to have points now. Somebody, about two, three people have said sensitization. Um, the last speaker just mentioned data gathering, and I agree with her so much. Uh, so we are, we are beginning to see way forward strategies, because before we start saying this, what we are doing, we need to talk. And the Bible says, come, let us what? Reason together. And that's what we are doing. And, and, and I think it's important because if there's one of the reasons why I feel we probably were hijacked by talks was because there was no reasoning together. Imagine there were certain people organizing evening Zoom meetings like this every day during that answers movement and we're reviewing issues and we're talking and we're analyzing and we're, you know, and we're conversing. It would have, it would have gone farther. Um, you know, so it's important that we talk first. Let's talk together. And everybody wants, uh, as this is going to hopefully be a two hour show, as many as can talk, give us ideas. Just tell us your name, your city, what particularly you want to talk about, and tell me, uh, um, unmute me. That's the fourth thing to write, and I'll bring you up. So we have Emmanuel Achi, go ahead. I need these videos to be shared the Zoom link to be shared with our houses brothers. I need houses here. Listen, you, if you think you can change Nigeria without Northern Nigeria, we're deceiving ourselves. One of the reasons why this answers movement was also hijacked was because we were not able to gather enough Northern Nigerians. And listen, they are more angry than us in the South. They are more marginalized than us. I'm not talking of the the uh, um, I'm not talking of the northern elite too, that, the, that that is chopping money. I'm talking of the average northerners, and that's why we must never allow them to move this thing to ethnic rubbish. If you know any northern group, share this link. Let them come and talk, please. Yes, Emmanuel Achi, go ahead. All right. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, uh, hello. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, um, thank you for sharing this uh, Zoom conference. I just saw it a few minutes ago and I logged on. What you just said now is already what's beginning to happen 
in the north. Because like yesterday, I was in my place of work and I got a text message that Muslims are planning a reprisal attack because they said their brothers were killed in Abuja and in Lagos. So we need to find a way to connect, okay, to connect with them. Okay, but down to my post, I made a post. I don't know how it will work out. I don't know the workability of it. Now that the whole nation is almost in anarchy, because if you look at social today, all you see is, uh, you know, people looting. In fact, Cross River State is there, uh, the, uh, 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 the Akwai bomb, and then Joss today, and all that. But I'm, uh, me, I'm calling from Plateau State. I'm calling from this. So, with the crazy energy that the youths are showing, if we can harness that energy for a positive movement, and I don't know how we can do that. I've been thinking, since I saw this link, I've been thinking, how can we harness their energy? Because what's playing out is that everybody is angry. Everybody has had enough. Yes. In fact, like the news I got from Cross River State today, is that they are looting every house that belongs to a political office holder. Mm -hmm. And then they are burning offices that belong to, you know, even the state government and all that. Now that is negative way of, uh, of um, showing for their energy. Yes. But if we could harness it. And then unfortunately, elections are still like three years away. If it were like this year, uh -huh, it would have been a different thing. But coming to the elections, I am sad to say that the two major parties, none of them is a saint. Mm. And that's the truth of the matter. Because you even go to the PDP states and you still find the hiding of palliatives and all that. Yeah. You still find this thorough wickedness and, and, and not caring for the masses everywhere. So we need a new platform I don't know the details. I've been talking to a few lawyer friends of mine for like a week now, asking them what can be you know, done to set up a new platform. We need a new platform where we can find credible people that will run. Okay. And then secondly, in the heat of what is happening right now, yeah. I don't know if there's a way we can set up an online uh, a platform where people can, you know, sign for a vote of no confidence. Because a lawyer friend told me if we could do that and, and send it to the UN, if they see the number of people that have signed it, it might be a different matter. Okay. Thank it may you change coloration. Thank you. thank you very much. Um, right, thank you. For the vote of no confidence, um, change.org is, you know, can do that. And there are already enough of that. And many of us can still try. You one day is next. Because of time, let's keep okay. it 30 seconds to one minute. We have over 70 people here and Mark, so the others can also give us ideas. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, you one day. Hello, excellent evening, everyone. Um, I hope you can all hear me. Yes, we can. Go ahead. Okay, awesome. So um, my name is Joanne De Grace and I'm a lawyer by training. And I'm so glad that we have, I have this opportunity to contribute and speak up. And I'm gonna keep this very short and sweet. Now, one thing we need to understand is that uh, uh, um, a movement without leadership, without a purpose, without a strategy, is gonna be almost like um, a pregnancy without a baby. It's going to be like a pregnancy that gives birth to fiber. So it's important that we have this discussion. Now, one of the very first um, point I'm going to give for way forward is this. We need an organization. Look, this thing is not social, just social. It is essentially political and a legal matter. Take it to the streets, yes, for the first step. The next step is to form a political party. Let's give it by the, let's call it by the name. We need a political party. Yes, data collection, all of that, but that would be an haphazard way of going about what we mm. need to do. 
We what we need is not just a change of government, but a change of governance. That's what we need in this in this country. And with the youth, I've spoken of. We have shown that we have the capacity to do what they have been able to do for the last 60 years. We have shown that we do not have the mentality that they have. They don't not forget that these people were children or are children of slaves born under oppression. The mentality that they have is that in order to move on and to move up, they need to oppress others. We have shown that we are not of that mentality. We have shown that we are not of that standing. So let's call a spade a spade. What we need is a political party. And under that, we can begin to strategize and move on the ground. We consider the, and this year, 2020, has shown us that we do not even need to be in a physical place to achieve things I want to achieve. We are the hashtag generation. We are the Soros okay people. We understand how to use technology. They don't. We can, while well, they think we've gone to sleep, we are busy working on the ground. Take a look at the dock. It sits calmly on the surface of the water, but it is paddling like mad underneath. That's what we need to do. Beautiful. Thank you so much. We don't uh, need the physical office. The internet is our office. We need to... So, Thank you, so um, thank you very much. I appreciate you all. I, and I know we all have so much we want to say, um, but we have a whole lot of us here, and we just want to give each of us an opportunity here because, like I said, um, we just need to talk to ourselves. And I wish we had something like this while the protest was going on to just talk, right? Because ideas have been, I've already listed about uh, six things right now that we could do from what everybody has said. And, and this is how we can create that change that is needed. Please, I'm begging you, the, if you, you can share the Zoom link or the Facebook pages at Stephen Akitayo TV on Facebook and on YouTube. I need Northern brothers and sisters here. I need the North here, please. Okay, we cannot create change without the Northern Nigeria. Let's wake up to that reality. Okay, we need the knots here. So let's get the northerners here. Let them come and talk to us. Even if they don't want us to do answers or end whatever, let them talk. I, I just, we just need that conversation. Young people of this country need to talk across different parts of Nigeria. We just need to talk to ourselves, right? You know, um, the next person is from Diaspora. She's Buki from London. I also have, um, Somebody here is an Indian, he's married to a Nigerian. So he's also going to speak from the perspective of foreigners who work in Nigeria um, also. Yes, Buki Lawal, go ahead. Yeah, no, not using it, but it's I'm on the live zoom. Can you hear me? Yeah, mute go party. ahead. And we all mute, mute ourselves. Mute party. Mute Everybody party. else, please mute yourself, please. Okay. Only your video should be up. Mute yourself. Bukila, go ahead. Thank you. So for us to win this war as youth and future leaders, I also believe that empowerment of the grassroots has to take place. And how do we do that? Through education, through campaigns. So we are talking about the Northerners. We need to campaign there aggressively, letting them know that, see, we are not enemies, we are brothers. This is the kind of life you can have. We in diaspora can, can take from the experience of what we enjoy here in London and show them what they can if they work together with us. Empower, empower we call them hoodlums. I don't believe they are hoodlums. Anyone can turn to a hoodlum if you're hungry. Empower these kids. Take them off the streets. Empower their parents. We have people with great ideas. Help build, build their ideas. These are the same people who will go back to the, the poor areas and tell them, these are the people working for us. Then yes, create a new party. Don't just create a new party, but let that party be people with the same idea. Let that party have watchdogs. 2023 is the only way to change Nigeria. I'm sorry, APC or PDP, whatever they're called, they are dead. They are recycled criminals within those parties. The next way is 2023, create your own party. Let people from diaspora, let there be different offices around the world that will fight for Nigeria. That is the only way, only way I can see Nigeria going forth. 
Thanks. Uh, That's my little contribution. Thank you so much. Please, I want to advise anybody coming up who want to see your face. So uh, it would be nice if your video is turned on. So um, I know a lot of us are trying to get at me so I could pull you up. The rule is you tell us your name. Um, you tell us the city you're joining us from. You tell us the topic you want to discuss, and then you type on mute and you put that in the comment section. I'll pull you up. Uh, if you have done that and yet have not pulled you up, just do it again because you know there are quite a lot of comments coming in. Um, so I appreciate that. Our next person is Emmanuel Onye Dikachi. Yes, Emmanuel Onye Dikachi, go ahead. So you tell us your name, the city you're joining us from, you tell us the topic you want to discuss and you type on mute me, right? All of it, you post it together in one word. Emmanuel Oye Dikachi, please go ahead. Okay, Emmanuel is not available. So let's have Ahmed Akande. Ahmed Akande, go ahead. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, I took my time to watch um, the two hours uh, session we had yesterday evening, and I, I drew some notes from there. I think we should all uh, go to Dr. Stephen Akitayo's page. Let's take our time. It's, uh, I, let's have it downloaded if need be. Let's share it. It's about um, 300 something MB um, so that we can have a background to this uh, discussion. Uh, basically, from a fall through from what, what we discussed yesterday, we need to start sensitizing. I have started mine. Each and every person that we meet, we need having your PVC is not enough any longer. We need to be active in the political parties. Let's get our party cards so that we can be involved. TK mentioned something yesterday. She said, she gave an example of the 2019 election, that we had no options than between Atiku and um, President Momo Dubwari. Those are the only options we have. To give ourselves more options, we need to be actively involved, actively involved in the process. Let's sensitize ourselves, let our influencers, our social media influencers, our, our artists, let them start mobilizing their followers. There's nothing wrong if as I stand as Ahmed, if I have my PVC and I have my APC card in my left pocket, my PDP card in my right pocket. After all, these politicians, if they fail in PDP, they run to APC with, overnight. So let's be involved in the primaries. That's the way we can actually get ourselves involved. Then talking about mobilizing our immediate community, I usually do something. I, I think it's good we share experience from what the Madam in Abu Leba said. Mm -hmm. In my community, what I, what I do is this. When you meet me, I don't have too much to give you for free. I get a value from it. When you meet me, you'll see me fixing potholes on our road that all of us use together. So when you meet me, you want anything from me, I'll tell you, join me, have the shovel. If you join me in rendering this community service, then I can pass with a thousand naira or a 500 naira for you. Do you know what? Almost everybody in that community now know me for that. That that's the man that fixes our road. And when you join me, he gets to give you something for pure water. So that way, these guys we call out, these guys we call talk, we can start to engage them. So that when you get to something as many as election, they know you are somebody that has always related to them. Thank you very much, Doc. Thank you so much. So I, I want to say background to what this man said was part of what we discussed yesterday, which was that we actually need a holistic strategy. So saying that we're going to start a new political party alone, is not just enough. For example, you start a new political party and just young people. The question is, the highest that can happen is that you win the presidential election. What happened to the House of Rep? What happened to, to, to Senate? What happened to local government? So what you then can have is a president who has genuine intentions, 
but you then have others who are going to frustrate that effort. So what we need is we need to form a youth party, absolutely. However, we need young people to infiltrate APC, PDP at the local level. Even if they will now not give a young person to become the leader, you will see that you can negotiate to say 50% of your cabinet must be youth, else I'm a Dakini. And so you have to, if they know you, 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 they couldn't do without you, then they have no choice. So we need an holistic strategy. One strategy is new political parties, yes. Second strategy is that we need to flood all the existing political parties. So that what will happen is that if we are baguette that 50% of the polit elective positions must be given to youths, even if the new political party we formed became the president, in the Senate, you still see 50% young people there, whether they are from PDP or from APC. And at least we can remind ourselves and say, remember the struggle that got us here. Remember what we promised the people, right? Let's go with this agenda, even if you are not from the party that the president is from. So you then can have something concrete. So guys, I, I agree, we all need to flood all political parties, APCO, PDP, as well as form new ones. We need to have PVCs and we need to go to the grassroots. I have been doing, so far, we, I have, but myself and my wife, we sent more than 5,000 kids to school during COVID-19, where in Ajegunle, we fed hundreds of families. But I think enough of that strategy needs to be reworked because it was a strategy majorly uh, um, focused on just helping people. There was no uh, um, agenda behind it. There was no trying to sensitize people. Now I think it's time to start saying, you know what? We'll go to Oshodi. We'll feed people. But after feeding, they will go with megaphone, right? You don't need to collect 5,000 naira from them. You know, I, you, I, at least they, they have eaten. They will hear us, right? And we begin to engage and, you know, and just educate people at that level. So fantastic. So I get sorry that we um, have so many people and um, I'm just struggling to know who to call up right now. So I have Dr. Uh, Baba Tope next that is coming up. Please, like I said, we can, you can repost your details. Uh, immediately somebody is done speaking because usually because of many comments, by the time somebody is done speaking, in some cases, you know, we're not able to see that you've asked me to call you up. Dr. Baba Tope, go ahead. Okay, Stanley Ibaji, Ibaji, Stanley Ibaji, sorry if I murdered your surname. Stanley Ibaji, you can come up after that Felicia Oyekola. Stanley Ibaji, after that Felicia Oyekola. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, Hi, hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, hello. good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm actually talking from Cross River State, Calabar precisely. I'm Dr. Babatope. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, what I would like to say is that I haven't seen all what has happened so far, and um, for some of us that have been in this country. And then what I actually want us to look at is that for those that are architects and those that are builders. They know that you know that there are every there are different steps that you follow before a house becomes what it becomes. One of those steps is that you have to first of all survey the land. After surveying the land, you would actually lay some foundation, then before you now start moving blocks, then before you now get to the design of the house. What am I trying to say in the essence? What I'm trying to say is that no matter the movement we are going to do, we have to actually know that it's something that is going to be time-taking and it's going to involve a lot of things. Like me now, I'm a medical doctor by profession. I know that where I am, I'm not from Cross River here, and I know that I've 
affected a lot of people positively with my own profession. We can start with that, not necessarily only by money. You can actually influence people with what you do. So that when people are talking, even based on what you do, you can actually have clout or people following you based on what you are doing. And people can actually have something good to talk about you. Influence is not just about money, it's not about any other thing. And then in building capacity, for you to be able to build a capacity or to build influence on people, they must first of all get your trust. Trust is something that is very, very important that they must first of all trust you. But the, the problem we may have to face is that if, you, if, we, if people cannot trust you, you won't, be able to get, you won't be able to get them doing things for you or supporting your cause. So in, just like the, some of the speakers have said earlier, in order for us to get trust and get all those things, that means we have to, we have to do something exceptional, something sacrificial, something that is different from what a normal person can do. Just like somebody cooking food and going to give them in the garage, that is something that is somebody cannot somebody cannot just sacrifice and just go there. Not everybody can do that. So to me, in building the capacity, every one of us, we have our profession, we have what we do, we have everything. As a youth of this land, let us use what we do. We may not all have the money to all put on the table, but we, within our profession, within what we do, we can use it and make influence. Then one, one, when, you, when you planted a tree and then you, you succeeded in planting another one, you continue planting and planting before you know anything. A, a, a single tree that started a, a forest, then before you know anything, you have a lot more. So what I'm, trying in essence, what I'm saying in essence is that if you influence one person, you can influence another person. The person you influence can influence another person. Before you know anything, you are actually building people and training people. And one thing I've learned about life is that if you cannot contribute positively to people's life, you cannot end their trust and you will not get followers. Like some of us, where we work now, where I work, there are thank some people you very that much. actually follow me. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Because of time, I appreciate you. Stanley Egbaji. Um, Stanley Egbaji. Day Grace. You want Day Grace? Hello. Yes, I'm yeah, actually you and this mother. Yes, I'm you and this mother. Ahead. Yes, and I want oh. to thank you guys for this brilliant thing you're doing. I have just one very one suggestion, and the mm. suggestion is that the constitution is long overdue for total overhaul and total review. So try to, whatever political parties anybody is setting up, one of the core things that needs to be done is, is to call for a referendum and get the constitution review. Basically what I'm saying is better to build a such fair, equitable structure, rather than hope that good people of integrity will occupy these positions. So let the structures be taken a look at, and then irrespective of the character, the Absolute. personality, of even among the youth. Absolutely, ma. Because yes. thank I, you very much. Thank you so much, ma. I agree with you absolutely, because institutions are even better than strong people. Nigeria is used to having strong people. President Bush yes. is a strong person, and um, yes. strong people do not create yes. good institutions. So at the end of the day, we, we lose because, no. and, and it's strong people that yes. are destroying Nigeria, honestly, because it, what we need is strong institutions, not strong people. Um, and we will probably have a better nation. So I agree with you very strongly. So we need a um, review of the 1999 constitution because it was done by the military and it just favored them. And that was basically what it did. And, and uh, Stanley Egbaji, I've unmuted you several times. You just didn't come up. So 
uh, I'm unmuting you again, Stanley Ebaji. For those of you just joining, when you join, tell us your name, the city you're joining us from, the topic you want to discuss, and type unmute me. Those are the four things you need to post at once to be able to bring you up. Good evening, everyone. Hello, can you hear me? Go ahead, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Please, can you show okay. your video? We need your video uh, scene, please. We said everybody who wants to speak has to show their video. Okay. Uh, just that there's a little uh, darkness here. So I actually okay. want uh, to... Oh, okay. My name is Stanley Baji. I'm, I'm chatting from Koshiva. I'm speaking from Koshiva State, Calabar, precisely. Actually, I want to talk about uh, structure, mobilization, and sensitization. Uh, if we don't have a better structure, all our strength will be wasted. All we'll be doing will just look at we don't have a direction. So it will be better, just like my other colleagues have said, if we can have a structure, possibly a name, a group, a name that will be given to us to be able to use to push uh, our purpose so that when people, when the people, the elites want to talk to us, we actually have representative that carries that particular name. So we will know that the people who are representing us are people from this group and not from any other group outside that. So people who come to represent us from group outside this particular group will not be given attention to. So in that way, it will be able to help us to organize ourselves and agitate for what we want. And not just that, we can also move to sensitize the people. Sensitizing the people does not mean we're only going to talk to them and tell them what they need to do and what they need to know. But also, we have to bring, like you, you made mention of um, the, the, the giveaway and the help the needy you did, yes, without any uh, agenda on it. But this time around, you put an agenda, not just give them and say, listen to me, but the, the helping the needy has to do with uh, 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 probably little job creation, skills acquisition, and all of that. Because some of this person, if you give them food to eat and they eat, and the end of the day, they go their way, they will still be hungry. But when some of these skills acquisition are being introduced on that day, because I saw the team, the coordination at the lecky, that shows that we have a lot at stake and we have a lot we can do and that we are coordinated. So if this is being done and put in place, a lot of people who want to live off the street and be responsible for those who are not. And while we're doing this, because the scripture says, it, the scripture talks about the renewal of the mind. And this is the only way you can do it. You can't talk to a, a hungry man who is already an angry man. He won't listen to you. But when you feed him, you don't just feed him and go away. You feed him and create something that will keep him off where you've already picked him from. So you that is one of the areas I feel we should actually you know, look thank, into it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Dr. Edu Kayat from Kano, can you, you can meet yourself, followed by Santosh. Okay. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Rukayat Aramide from Kano, even though I'm from Ohio State, but I reside in Kano State. Now, I am very glad about this um, movement, and I would like to air my views. We all know what has been going on in Nigeria right now in the past few weeks. And whether we like it or not, everybody has a common goal. The peaceful protesters, the hoodlums, the thugs, the name it, whoever you see on the street right now, even those who are indifferent because of the environment and financial right now. You see that everybody has a common goal. And what is that? Clamoring for a better Nigeria with good governance and good infrastructure and strong institutions. That is everybody's common goal. So now if we look at it, how do we achieve all this? We can't achieve it without acknowledging what our main problems are. And the main problems here, like we know, comes from one, the constitution that is long overdue for review. Secondly, policies that are not so friendly, policies that need to be reviewed based on corruption and several other factors that impede national growth and development. 
education, which is not here. I'm the only. I was invited to talk. I'm sorry. Systems, our systems are so corrupt and so porous that it enables everybody, it encourages corruption. So what am I saying? We need youth in positions of power, but I don't agree with the fact that we need to flood existing political parties. Because right now we have youth there, and I feel ashamed and disappointed when I see youths of my age being in that position, and when they get there, they forget where they are coming from, they forget the things they used to say before they got there, and they also take part in these things everybody is protesting about. And what are these things? Cost of governance, exorbitant cost of governance. These are the things we need to look at in our constitution. The cost of governance in Nigeria is extremely high, and there is no country that does that that actually progresses. We all know the statistics from the world. Nigeria's legislatures are the ones that get the highest paid in the world for doing virtually the things they do, which we all know. So you had, they spent so much. These are the things we need to look into. For me, even if there is a new youth movement, to, a new youth movement tomorrow, and there is any youth that has actually partaken in this government of these existing two political parties right now that has been used to collecting all this huge amount of money, I don't think they will function well in the new system we are going to find ourselves. If you put any of those youth in the new system, they will end up being corrupt. All they will be after is to go away with the money because that is what they are doing right now. So we need to find a way of reviewing the constitution and the system and the policies in place that will discourage all these things. We will reduce the cost of governance to the barest minimum. We make politics a part-time business. There is nowhere in the world that politics become a full-time job. Everybody should find work to do. We've all gone to schools. What's the essence of going to school? We spent years in school. We spent years struggling. How do you come and hold a political position or a public office for two years and because of that, you become rich for life? It's not done. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, the next thing they do is to replace themselves with their children, with their husbands. And before you know it, they form a dynasty. And this is the chain of problems we have found ourselves. So I think these are the things we need to look into. Secondly, our education, universal basic education, which you have an agenda, really. I'm sorry, I'm taking our time. There is so much yes. to say in time. Now, mm. the things on our agenda, a youth movement, I agree, not to flood these existing political parties. If you put a bad egg in a basket, it's going to spoil everything inside. I think a new movement with a new vision to reorient the system, to review the constitution, to have top things on the agenda. And what are these top things on our agenda? Universal basic education, quality education for everyone. Infrastructure, okay. build our infrastructure, build our systems, build good policies, have good policies. A public officer, a civil servant should not be in a position to take contracts. Mm. A public servant should not be in a position to inflate the cost of contracts. We all blame politicians, but politicians are still alone. They are headed by civil servants. They are headed by top people in the ministries. So we need all this universal healthcare, education, infrastructure, vocational training. And by the time we do this, I'm sure we'll be better for it and our country will be better for it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Because of time, we have, uh, um, I mean, for those of you who are not able to join us on Zoom, I think this Zoom can only take 100 live, live people. Please, you can join us on YouTube and on Facebook at Stephen Akidao TV on YouTube and on Facebook, you know, but this can only take, you know, 100 live people per time. Uh, Santosh, um, are you, Santosh is a Nigerian, but um, he's not a Nigerian, rather he's married to a Nigerian, he's an Indian. So, uh, so Santosh, you are next. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Yeah, I want to say only with, uh, some some things like that. First of all, we should have unity. And secondly, what we have problem in Nigeria here. We should think about it. People don't have the job. We should have the Santos. I, I think you need to give people job. Mr. Santos, you need to work on your network. All the small uh, youth, they don't have the job. They do education, do everything. At last, they will end it. 
So what my question was to him? Okay, go Hello? ahead. Your network is better Hello? now. Go ahead. Your network is better now. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's freezing again. Uh, so we should have the unity first and the youth. So, Mr. Santos, if you can change your source of internet, um, it's really, really freezing. I, I do care you are next. So if you can get a better source of internet, uh, it would be great. So Mr. Santos is pushing for unity, um, you know, but hopefully he gets a better source of internet and join Hello, us. good evening, everybody. Good evening. Can we see your video, please? Thank you. Oh, my video. Yes, please. Can you see me now? Yes, we can see you. Go ahead. Okay, please. My suggestion is uh, based on the current situation we have in Nigeria. Right now, the biggest problem we have in Nigeria, to my best of knowledge, is bribery and corruption. A lot of bribing is going on in the system that even the youth, they are ready to be bought. It's not all the youth that are standing now will stand again when they see money. You can see the meeting they entered yesterday. They started mentioning bogus amounts. They want to give to youth for youth empowerment, this and that. And so many, if you follow the comments on channels, um, uh, news, you see that so much, so many of these youth, they're already considering backing out of the protest, supporting the government. Here in abroad, we don't worship um, godfathers. We don't worship money. There are some basic amenities that is your right. You need to have them, like good electricity, good roads, good hospitals, uh, free education. All these things is your right. Just let us enlighten them. Let them imagine that if they have these things in place, 24 hour elect electricity, would they, would they not be able to make times 20 of this money they are trying to bribe them with? And if you are given this money, maybe the money will go to one direction. And if eventually you receive maybe one million error, what can that do for you? What can that do for your unborn children? So we need to focus more on making our youth to understand that collecting bogus money from politicians is not the way forward. And if there's going to be any party that is going to be set up for the youth, the old politicians should not be allowed to be godfather to anybody. Because right now, the meeting they are entering, to my best of knowledge, is they are trying to see any youth that can come out for them to be godfather to that youth. Why are they doing this? They are scared of probing. They know that if any of these uh, um, jet age youth, we call ourselves the jet age youth, enter into system, we will probe them to the last. And they are scared of this problem. If not, why are we all these old, old people still trying to come together again? Let them remove themselves and allow this new generation to rule. We need to take over completely. We don't need any godfatherism. We don't need backup. Yes, they say we don't have experience. We don't need old experience. Where has this experience led these people? The experience is leading nowhere. We don't need the experience of thieves. We don't need the experience of murderers. We just need to rule with our own sense. If we fail, let us fail. And I know we won't fail. So they should allow the youth to take over completely. And any youth with bribery and corruption mentality should be enlightened. Maybe there should be an organization that will be set up to enlighten these people. You don't need to be daddy and daddy anybody. You're like a governor, you say, welcome daddy, welcome mommy. You don't need that. You don't need to call anybody sir, mommy, daddy in government. You, they are your colleagues. They, have, they are there to serve you, serve you with your money. Don't see them like your God. Because if we don't remove this mentality from our brain, we will keep falling victims and they will keep using us. I want to first of all appreciate everyone who took part in that protest. Really, may the almighty God bless every one of you. I appreciate you. I thank you for your courage, for standing up for Nigeria. I, I really, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Forget all the people that try to discredit your effort. You did well. Your videos, your pain you went through is not unnoticed. We noticed it and we cherish it. And I pray that this labor will not be in vain. We will conquer completely. This is revolution. We don't have to give up. Giving up is not the way to getting up. We have to get up. Right now, the thing they have brought us down, we are going up. So I just want us to have that positive mentality of not going down. So we have to stick up from where we start. 
Thank, Thank you, you so much um, because of time. I uh, want to say also, we need to appreciate all our Nigerians in diaspora. Even now that we've stopped protests in, in Lagos or most parts of Nigeria, in the UK, in the US, protests has continued. They are not yeah. giving the, um, you know, in fact, they went to, I heard they even went to Buckingham Palace today in London. Um, you know, so those of you in diaspora, thank you for um, standing up, for speaking up. I mean, the way the international community was forced, I won't say they wanted to, you guys forced them, okay, to, to speak up, to, because reality is that these guys don't care that much. I mean, they don't. I keep saying it, Nigerians have to stand up for themselves, thinking that America will come and save us, UK will come and save us, we're deceiving ourselves. But they saw how the, uh, London was almost shut down yes. by protesters. So they knew that they had no choice. But the British government brought this current administration to power. Um, you know, so they are a bit, you know, uh, almost non-challenged. But I want to say a big thank you for all that you guys have been doing in diaspora. Thank you, guys. Thank so, you so much. Um, Abraham from Vienna. Uh, Abraham from Vienna. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Akintayo, for setting up this platform. And thank you for everyone who has been contributing. Now, my own suggestion will be this. I want to urge us, let us think of, I like to align myself with this option of setting up a youth movement. Let's not go the way of political party because that way we are going to be um, spreading our energy in many directions. And some of our youths are already foot soldiers for the PDP and for AS, uh, APC. And they are going to come, up, uh, come around and start fighting our political party. Instead of that, let's set up a youth movement that will have presence in all the 774 local governments in the country. We can do that because we are everywhere. Now, this youth movement is going to be purely apolitical. We are not friend of any political party. We are just a pressure group that wants to advocate only for good governance. Now, how do I mean? When it's time for election at the local government level, let that youth movement, let them set up debates for every candidate that is going for any office and submit our agenda for those candidates and said, if you can promise us that when you get there, you will do this, you will do this, you have our blood vote. Now, our sister from Kano talked about young men getting there and messing up. Yes, when they go there, they get sucked in into the system. But if we have this youth movement, which is a pressure group and is not attached to any political movement uh, party, we will stand as an independent pressure group. Anybody will push there, we stay outside government and we keep watching him. And we have structures at each local government headquarters, each state capital, so that like two times in a year, we have a meeting with those guys we supported with our blog vote and compare notes. This is the agenda we gave you. In six months, we have not seen any, um, any sign that you are doing so. So that way, anybody we support with our blog vote, be him an old man, a new man, we hold them to account two times in a year. And then I also want to talk about some position which we should not joke with. Oftentimes I see young people talking about presidency, this, this, we don't, you see, there are some offices in this nation that if we capture them, we will see development springing up everywhere. Talk about the local government chairman. In our little corners, let us uh, organize ourselves. It's either we push one of us there or we support somebody from the established platform and give him an agenda and hold him to account. Then those are powerful offices we often overlook. Another one is the State House of Assembly. Let's either flood the State House of Assembly or push our own people there. Because we hear stories of the allocation meant for local government ending up in the pocket of the governors. Now, if you, even if it is a saint that you make your local government headquarters, if uh, your local government chairman, if the allocation for the local government is sitting in the pocket of the governor, he can't do anything. 
So if we have our own people at the House of Assembly, they can pressure the governor and say, look, release every Kobo that uh, belongs to the local government to them so that they can do things for our people in the hinterland or we impeach you. And for the council, let's also take over all the, let's plan to either put our people as councillors or put people who have our um, agenda there. Because those guys can also put pressure on the local government chairman and say, it's either you develop this locality, we know how much is coming from the capital every month. It's either you develop this uh, locality or we impeach you. Let's okay, not... I, I, I really have to move on to somebody else because of time. Oh, yeah, thank but you for I, the opportunity. I, I really want to thank you for the pressure group conversation. Today there was a town hall meeting, virtual town hall meeting between the deputy governor of Ogun State and, and the youth who led the protests in, in uh, Songwater. And um, even the governor had announced 12 road that will be constructed because they channeled, they became a pressure group and their, their own protest was channeled towards the bad road that was around Songwater. And, and the, in fact, I mean, even the Olota of water came out, begged them, they told him well, they want to see the governor himself. That when he was contesting, Shebi knew how to come, come there every time begging. And, and that led to a, you know, a, a virtual uh, town hall meeting today and the government officials were all there. So I feel even if this is gonna move into uh, a political party, let it start with a movement that is more of a pressure group that begin to put pressure on politicians, that begin to threaten them. Because that's what all these people understand. We will not vote you again. This will be your last time if you do not change this. If you do not correct this, you know, your political career is finished. When we begin to, and they can see us in numbers. I mean, look at the, uh, how many of us are in Lagos, by the way, if you're in Lagos type, I'm in Lagos, I'm in Lagos. One of the things I feel we could do for those of us in Lagos, on Monday, they have given us the location of where the panel is going to be sitting. The panel of inquiry uh, um, to look into the killing uh, including the uh, lucky killings and extrajudicial killing by uh, SARS, can we go there and organize a press conference? The, uh, uh, and, and just as peer pre pressure group, number one demand, we need a youth that is a co-chair of that panel. Number two demand, we need 50% of the panel to be young people. Number three demand, we need the panel to first go, get the tapes, um, and do a war press conference and stream, you know, the entire thing that happened. And, you know, and, and so the investigation needs to even start with the lucky shooting and invite the GOC, okay? Uh, and all the other military commands in Lagos who will have known about Audrey military or no Audrey military. And they come and talk. What happened? At some point, we even invite the governor to come and talk himself. So I think this is the kind of direction we need to begin to move uh, uh, um, conversation at this moment. Yet, yes, I agree with you. It can later turn to a political party. But for now, we need to even start putting pressure, right? To say, we need this. We need this. Because guys, OK, last election, they deceived us to say uh, youths were not contesting, right? All the youths, I knew Ahmed Buhari was in PDP. Some other ones tried to contest in APC. They didn't even take them serious. The ones, Shawore Ako and Felado, who went to start their own party, you saw how they ridiculed them with 18,000 votes. Because these guys do not even have, you know, like what many of us don't know is that for you to win president, for you to even win election, in Nigeria, okay, as a political party, you for you to win election at the governorship level, ladies and gentlemen, you need to spend five to ten billion naira. And anybody that tell you otherwise is deceiving you. And I'll give you a breakdown. Even agents, you need for you to be the president of Nigeria, you need agents in about one fifty polling units. One fifty polling units. 
Now, to mobilize those people to move from their house to their polling unit, at least they need to have 10,000 error. is legitimate. Okay, cost of mobilization to be our agent in this unit. Multiply 10,000 error, ladies and gentlemen, by 150,000. Can somebody do that math? Multiply 10,000 error by 150,000. Okay, that is going to begin to give you an idea of the kind of <laughs> what is needed, okay, in terms of, so what, what is really, serious, and that's what I'm saying, well, because earlier when I said we should start a youth party, I agree, but we should still go ahead and flood all the other parties. People were saying no, and that they will be corrupted. The reason they are cor people are corrupted is because People were, went there to help old seasonal politicians become leaders. This one, you are flooding to say, hey, we want 50% of the positions, elective position, to be given to our people. Else, we are, we are granting this party. And if we move in mass, I mean, look at, how many of you have ever attended a primary, uh, um, a ward meeting of any political party? You go for that ward meeting. And see what they share. Indomie, one tin tomato, or such a, sorry, such a tomato. And I can assure you, in many of the words, there's no one single graduate there. Not one single graduate that is in those. So at the end of the day, election comes. Don't ah, Baba Sope, this is the person we are voting for. This, you know, because these people are not even that much, you know, you, you give the, that's why, why do you think they, they send talks? These talks are not hard to convince. Give a talk 2,000 Naira, he will do and undo. It's the same thing in the North. If you give some of these Almagiri guys 5,000 Naira to bring somebody head, they will bring it to you in less than an hour. That's the level of, they have weaponized poverty in Nigeria. They have weaponized poverty. So we need to start new political parties, but you need to know, for those political parties to grow, it takes time. Since party, even though it started it, even at governorship level, before you know, somebody will hijack the thing. As we speak to you, somebody is still claiming to be the founder, uh, the president of Shoure's party, as we speak, the, as small as that party is. Okay, as small as it is, that's the, so, when you say you are, it's just going to be by starting a party, you first use two election circles to fight for leadership of that party because they will sponsor these guys. These guys will frustrate that party and frustrate everything. So we should start young political parties. I'm not against that. I'm support of that 100%. But we should still infiltrate the existing ones in bulk with demands without as well as create pre pressure groups, even in the existing old political parties. Pressure groups are saying young uh, um, uh, movement in APC, young political movement in PDP, right? And you are coming together and say 50% of position most elective vote, not even cabinet vote. Because what they deceive us to say is that, don't worry, don't worry, it's not your turn yet. When, you, when we win, we will give you some cabinet position. I have a friend, Dio Israel. I saw how much he fought for APC in the last election. I thought they would at least give him a commissioner of youth. At the end of the day, they made him a secretary in Subeb. Subeb. Right? They would just put you in one place like that. You are, you are quiet. So, and that's what's going on. So this time around, I'm saying the youth should flood. Not so that you help them win. No to flood and say, if you don't give us this thing, at least they now know we have power. We are not going to allow anything to move forward. So I'm going to pick more questions. We have about 30 minutes or so. Uh, but is this making sense at all? What This conversation that we need to op uh, create pre pressures, we need to flood all the po political parties as well as create new ones. If you agree, type, I agree, I agree, I agree. Come on. OK. Um, but guys, this is not a one method fits all. That's why we're having this conversation. We need a, a um, you know, a comprehensive um, strategy, you know, so it's not like one strategy alone, 
And that's why we're having this conversation that the strategy has to be very holistic, has to be comprehensive. We must attack this thing with everything. Okay, everything. Um, let me see. Uh, quite a lot of people want me to add them, but I'm struggling to even see you guys. Um, please, I, I know some of us um, are being kicked out by Zoom. Ne tomorrow we're going to increase the Zoom to have 500 capacity. Um, but if you want me to pull you up again, please put your details. Okay, Choma Edwin, Choma Edwin. Okay, you are good to go. Choma Edwin, you're next. For those of you just joining us, um, please, if you want me to pull you up, tell us your name, the city you're joining us from, the topic you want to discuss, as well as type the word on mute. And when you, you, you are done, make sure your video is on and repeat your name and where you are joining us from. Um, very important, please. So Choma Edwin, you are next. After that is Becky. Choma Edwin, go ahead. Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, actually, I'm using my wife's phone. So my name is Chris. Um, I am in Abu Dhabi, but originally heard from Imo State. I, I just joined not quite long, but I listened to what Dr. Oh, Stephen video, video. Oh, your... sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yes, um, I listened to what Dr. Steven said, and um, I think uh, he just spoke out of experience. Uh, it's very important that we have, we, we grow pressure groups. That is the only way we can uh, collectively have a common agenda to change the country. Uh, but before we can achieve or get to the level of having a positive or impact in elections, we need to also infiltrate the already strong existing um, parties. Um, I don't want to waste much time. He has made much, most of the uh, point that I would normally contribute, but as time goes on with the meetings, we would be coming up with ideas on how to, you know, get everybody along. But most importantly, considering what has happened, um, the 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 idea to change the narrative in Nigeria is something that is divine. Uh, nobody would have you know, believed that good number of youths will come out to protest, um, but not because we all have good intention, but because there is a, a reflex that is pushing everybody. So for us to translate this uh, reflex into consistent action, we need to have a plan. We need to have a plan in as much as most of us might not be in Nigeria, some are in diaspora, we need to also have a kind of a unified system that can connect the youth. Um, if it involves us having a high level of uh, technology to have our own form of um, electoral platform to have the leaders that we want to represent us as youth, a platform that we can use to select them, a platform we can use to have a unified discussions so that someone who is in Imo State under this same platform will not be doing something different and somebody in Lagos will be doing something different. Before you know it, um, the ideas and the common goals will be infiltrated just like the same way hoodlums we are trying to hijack the common goal of the protest. So at this point, I think um, this is the only point I would like to add to what uh, Dr. Stephen has said. 
thank you very much. Everyone. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Um, um, Hello. Hello, good morning. Oh, sorry, good night. Hello. 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 Hello, good evening. Hello. Hello. Please, can you hear me? Hello, good evening. But I can't hear you, so I need I need someone to, to speak to me. Hello, I can I can tie up. B O go ahead. B O go ahead. Uh, good evening. My name is Becky, uh, and I'm talking to you today from Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States. I want to talk about uh, youth, in youth involvement. Um, in America, you have to be 95 percent of the time. You have to be 18 years of age to get into college or university. So, 2012, I was doing a little program in one of the colleges. And I saw what youth involvement can do, how youth involvement can change an election. I'm not talking about youths of about 30 years old and 40 years old or 25 years old. I'm talking about youths of about 18, 19, 20, and 21. But in Nigeria, we are lucky because we have this 15, 16 years old already in the university. So if we are going to catch these leaders of tomorrow, we have to catch them young. They shouldn't learn about politics through the SUG. They have to come in. I, one of the main thing I did while I was volunteering for the 2012 election was just to explain the agenda to these people, to explain to them what they stand to gain individually, if they vote for this or if they vote for this, how they are, they are the, the person that wins the election is going to affect their life individually. I think we should go back to the schools. We should go to the schools, have these young people understand the electoral process. They don't even know what it means for them. All they know is PDP, APC. Going back to what Dr. Uh, what uh, Yewande Esquire said, he talks about uh, new youth um, political parties. Yeah. That is fine. But these people, you want to raise leaders that are going to continue. We don't just want to win 2023. We want to raise people that are going to continue in the fight to make Nigeria great. We have to go to these schools, to this grassroots, pick up these 15 years old, 16 years old, explain to them what leadership is. They don't even know what it means to vote or what it means for somebody to win an election, how it affects them. My only job during my volunteer in 2012 for the election was just to tell them, if this person wins, this is what your school is gonna get. You can get this education, this um, healthcare system is what we're gonna operate, just to explain to them 
what they need. The 45 years old youth, the 50 years old youth, uh, the 35 years old youth, a lot of them are corrupt and a lot of them already understand. But then we're talking about these young people, we're talking about these 18, 21, 22, 23 years old that have not even gone to serve. A lot of them don't even know why they serve their country. If PDP wins, that's all they know. Uh, Buhari will be president. If APC wins, this other person will be president. They don't understand the agenda. They don't understand what the manifest the manifesto represents. We have to enlighten these people. We have to tell them why they have to get a, a PVC at the age of 18, why they cast their vote. They, they don't Fantastic. know. They have no idea. Thank so we need people much, in each state eh, to work with these young people to explain to them because we need their force, we need their power. There are a lot of them. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. That's a fantastic contribution. I appreciate you very well. Um, we have Deolu. Adedayo, Deolu Adedayo. You can mute yourself. Uh, okay. Lawa, let's see if we can get Lawa back again. Lawa, go ahead. Yeah, hello, uh, good evening. Good evening. My, my name is Lawa Oludam Lario from your state, Ibadan. So I want to speak, I, I want to speak on uh, the mosque, the church, and the Hollywood. Our street, uh, uh, this um, comedy sort of thing. You see, we need to educate everybody. Everybody needs to go back to their churches. Educate your pastors. Pastors, imams, afars, most church, they are the major people these people are using to brainwash people over either APC or PDP. Let me tell you something. I am one of APC members, and I won my primary as honorable in my consistency or show state it will. So I have their experience, I have the knowledge, I have the scope they use. They go to the churches, to your pastors, to most imam place, they give them money and they brainwash them to brainwash their members. There is nobody that is not going to church. There is nobody that is not going to mosque. We need to do that first. Number three, number two is that <clears throat> all the, they are using all these Nollywood actors and actresses for their campaign. Whenever we need to tell them the reason why those people do, need, do not need to collect money from them again. We need to educate them as well. They are my dedicated. But see, they are also brainwashed. All these kids, like, uh, uh, like, uh, Kilo Koma, you know, Thomas Sheskiti, you know, oh, oh, my, like Macaroni, like everybody, we need to tell them they should always educate people through their skits too. Doing skits that will educate people. You know, people spend a lot of time on phone, well, well, uh, watch their skits, and they will start laughing. So they need to start educating so that we, we are unable to reach. You know, we have to we need to reach to the grassroots. Those people we know things through these kids. And lastly, lastly, please allow me. Lastly, we need to go back to our hometown because they also want election through hometown. I'm telling you the truth. They will go to the hometown. Those mama who does not even have anything, who are not even educated, they will just give them 1,000 naira, 500 or 200 naira. They for, will vote for them. Like me now, I'm from Iwo, Osho State. I used to go to my hometown. I used to, I used to educate my people. Everybody needs to go back to their hometown, educate your father, educate your mother, educate your relatives, your family. Either you are in the bus, anywhere you are there, speak about the youth movement. That's all I have to say tonight. Thank you. Fantastic. That's a very good one. Those of you in diaspora, tell your family members they should, if they don't have PVC, you are not sending them money. Right? It's, that's how you start your education. No PVC, no money. Go and get one. Uh, yeah. Yes. The, the churches, the churches, 
the mosque, please, the churches, the mosque. We need to, we need to okay. work on pastors and the affairs and the imam. Please, okay. it, that is very important. And Miss Doctor Stevie Akintayo, please try to be jotting down every word, everybody, every comment, everything everybody are talking about. Maybe we should have another platform about um, uh, aside from this where you draft okay. everything. All that is noted, please. Because of other people, let's just talk quickly. Okay, okay. guys. So, when, okay, um, thank you. Person, thank you. God bless you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, see, still will on Friday. I've muted both of you. Can go ahead. Hello. Okay, my name. Hello, my. Okay, my name is Cyril. Uh, this is Cyril. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, uh, good evening. Um, first of all, I want to commend you for the great work you are doing and for all those who stood up to Sorostoke uh, and for the new reawakening we are having in our nation, Nigeria. It's a beautiful thing to see. Um, I have also listened to other people on this platform and everybody is expressing ideas whether going solo or a new political party or entering into the old ones. Uh, let me say something about what got us all to where we are today. NSAS is a metaphor. It's an idea whose time has come. Those who created it uh, began to address a challenge we have in our society and it grew organically. Um, it is necessary that we do not lose the magic of the answer. There's no hurry about leadership or about structure. People, celebrities, all those who have started this movement must sustain the tempo in speaking out about the challenges in our nation. Now, certain things flow organically. I have the pleasure on the plateau. I don't come from plateau, but I live here. And I, leave a, I lead a coalition of 26 organizations. It's called Plateau Coalition of Business and Professional Associations, PLACOBA. And we, are, we receive support from the Center from, for International Private Enterprise in Washington. Now, you do not need to reinvent the wheel. Um, I believe that the NSAS movement, where we are now, must understand how to build coalitions, how to work with other groups, how to spread their tentacles. And yes, for now, they, it looks like there's a disconnect between the North and the South. Now that has to be deliberately uh, uh, attended to so that we speak consistently of the concerns of the people in the North here. Why it is like that is that for the, those who are in the South or Southerners, there's this challenge. Everybody understands the evil of our answers. So you need to also raise those key concerns people in the North are having, banditry, uh, Boko Haram and all that. And we need to keep talking about these things. Now, whether or not the youth will uh, take over the system, the truth of it is that what has been achieved in less than three weeks, has shaken Nigeria to its roots. And suddenly our political leaders are awake. And it is because, you see, evil tries when good people keep quiet. Mm. The young people have started speaking. Let us not lose that voice. Mm. Let us not be in a hurry. Now, okay, you can't go out to protest and all that, but issues must be raised consistently. You see, pressure the, in the world over, the political leaders understand pressure groups. That mm. is what NSAS has become. Yeah. It is a pressure group. It must not stop. Um, the issues have been raised and now everybody is sitting up. And unfortunately or fortunately for the political class, the spread is crossing over from the Southwest, Southeast, yeah. we're in the middle belt. In fact, I'm in just today. There was a bonanza for palliatives and all that. It's gotten into Kaduna. Yeah. And I assure you, before you know, it will be in Sokoto. Now, yeah. the masses of Nigeria are hungry. Yeah. Everybody is affected by this thing. So let's yeah. speak the same language. Now, the hurry about 
we start a political party. You see the truth, you said some things and I like your exposure. Uh, political party no be beans. You don't just get there overnight. So the first thing we do is those who are there, three years is a long time. Mm -hmm. You need to be alive to vote in 2023. Mm -hmm. We need to get these guys who are there now to sit up. Exactly. And, and it is not next week, it is not next year, it is today, it is now. So yeah, please, the absolutely. pressure must not stop. Absolutely. And the coalitions, and then those, the, the people who have the star appeal and all that, everybody knows in Nigeria who Davido is, even in Jigawa. Mm. People should begin to deliberately come over here to interact. And let me say this, there is a structure for entertainment that is already present in the North, which people in the South do not understand. While we have Nollywood, they've created something called Carnywood, and they have their stars. They have household names. I don't see any reason why we can't have a handshake with some people and begin to involve them and conscientize them. And I assure you, if you break into the youthful population of the North, the game is over. Because the whole game plan now, the gimmick of the North side divide or they bring religion or ethnicity or something and all that. So it is about the youth. It is about the concerns of Nigeria let us keep talking. I assure you something that happens. Things flow organically. The awakening and the hunger now for people to do things differently. Suddenly governors are making promises, left, right, center, local government, everybody is waking up and it is great. Even the people in Aso Villa have sat thank up. You. So thank please, you. thank you very much. Let us just maintain the pressure. Things like what you've provided now is a platform to create a conversation. We should not stop it. Things just as answers grew organically and it's a global Pan-African world. In fact, the whole Africa is looking up to us now. We should continue it and leaders will evolve naturally. There's no hurry. It mm -hmm. will begin. And yes, we can affect 2023. In fact, we can affect local government election, elder elections we hold before 2023. So let us not just focus on that. We need to also be alive before then, as I said. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak and blessings and good luck. And uh, we are with you and you're doing a great job. And for all those who have also tuned in, it's wonderful to hear people suddenly being concerned about what's going on. I've been in the political sphere on and off for a long time and I understand. And I have never been happier in my life. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. We have, um, yes, as Kelvin, you are next, Kelvin. And um, because of our time, Kelvin will be the last person for today. Um, what we're going to do with tomorrow, we will increase the capacity of this show to be able to take up to 500 people. A lot of people said they couldn't join us. But um, so tomorrow we increase that. Kelvin, go ahead. Hello, Kelvin. Okay, so the time is, um, is 7 p.m. Nigerian time for now. If we need to change it, we'll let you know. So for now, we use 7 p.m. Nigerian time. Kelvin, go ahead. You need to unmute yourself. Please go ahead, Kevin, unmute yourself and go ahead. Eric, is this link the same link for tomorrow? Hello, Eric, is this the same link we are going to be using for tomorrow, Eric? Um, Kelvin, I'm still waiting for you to unmute yourself. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm gonna just allow Kaya to speak instead of Kelvin and be the last person. 
Um, Kaya Day, let's see. Kaya De Odunta, please go ahead. Hello, Steve. Steve. Kaya De Odunta, go ahead. Thank please. you. And, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you to everyone who has been a part of this movement. Uh, in my own little way, I think that um, the present Senate we have in Nigeria have, have promised us electoral reforms. They have promised us constitutional reforms. Is, is your video on? Can we see your uh, video? God knows how many years. Um, I can't even count how many years they have promised us this. But over time, we have seen that they are not yes my video is on yeah but your network is breaking really. yes my video is on yeah but your it's cracking yes my video is on uh, okay. Just to, uh, yeah my video is on go ahead go ahead go ahead Can we see my video? I said, go ahead. Okay, let me, let me. Please, can you go ahead? Hello, are you there? Um, okay, so I'm not sure he's here. What I've done, I've created a group. I'm calling it the New Nigeria um, Movement. Um, New Nigerian Youth Movement, that's the name I'm giving it. It's a WhatsApp group. Everybody has been asking for WhatsApp group. So it's a WhatsApp group. I'm going to post that link now. You can all join. We can continue this conversation. Tomorrow, we're still going to uh, be here to discuss, to interact. Um, but let's start the conversation. If this group gets filled up, we'll probably we'll create another group. Um, please note, we are not a political party with movement. By that, it means mm -hmm. we're a pressure group and we're hoping to um, continue to have conversations and continue to discourse, continue to see how we can move for something good. Um, some of you are asking us to create a, a, a Telegram group. Yeah, let's just create the WhatsApp for now. Once it's filled up, we can then create Telegram. I notice that people are not as active on Telegram like they are on Facebook. Um, so, you know, obviously. So uh, I want to say a big thank you to all of you who have been here. You watched, you've contributed. I apologize, some of you were not able to bring you up. Um, we'll do our best tomorrow to bring you up. We'll, I've posted the link again. Um, just copy it and you can join. It's a WhatsApp. It's a WhatsApp group. So just click on that link. It should take you to the WhatsApp group. Um, yes, I, I just posted the link. For those of you asking for the link again, I've just posted it. Um, so let me just recap a couple of things that were discussed tonight. Um, number one, we need to do grassroots sensitization um, everywhere, just grassroots sensitization, the importance of voting, the need for people to, um, the importance of those they call thugs, hoodlums, to know that they cannot afford to sell their destiny, their future. The reason why, uh, and just get these people to also be on our side, because if we don't, the politicians 
will continue to, and they will keep using them against us. Election will come. These guys will carry stone, they will carry stick and, and go and disrupt where people are voting and everybody will be running elter skelter. That's what they've been doing. That's what they will still do. They will still use these hoodlums. So what this then mean is that we all need to come out. We all need to speak out. We all need to find a way to talk to these hoodlums and say, hey, we're having this conversation in the interest of every one of us. These people that are giving you money, how long will this money last you? You know, so we need to begin to have that conversation. Number two, uh, we need to have data gathering, start gathering data, streets, names of streets, names of uh, people leading those streets. Um, we need to have, um, you know, just begin to gather data everywhere, right? And just begin to gather data. Number three, uh, connect with the knot. We need to find a way to connect with the knot. Uh, we need to find a way to connect with the knot very strongly. Let's connect with the knot. Number four, um, um, of course, vote. Let me see. Okay, we need to all get, um, create a platform, a platform that everybody can can bring everybody together. So we need to create a platform that can bring everybody together uh, across all divides. Okay, so create a platform that brings everybody together across all divides. Uh, we need. Um, we need a new political party. We need to join the existing parties also. We need to come up with a brand new constitution. We need skill acquisition for all these people they call out. We need to turn to a pressure group, even within political parties, have pressure groups that can enforce agenda of young people. Um, platform for Communication has also been discussed. We need to educate pastors, imams, churches, Nollywood actors and actresses. Everybody gets to be involved and we need to push everybody to get involved. Those of you who have gotten the link, kindly pass it on to others who are asking for it. Our last conversation will be with uh, a gentleman in the, in the US. His name is Deepo Adesino. I uh, came up with a brilliant idea and I, I supported it. So I, you know, together worked on a name um, for what we're doing. It's called the New Nigerian Youth Movement. And uh, let's hear from him some of the, the ideas he has. Yeah, Deep World, we need. Yeah, can you, can you hear me? You're joining us from deep up. Go ahead. Can you hear me clearly? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Um, so definitely thank thanks so much for this opportunity. Um, so earlier this morning, I um Dr. Steven and emphasized on the need for us to create a movement. All right. And this is a movement that's just not localized to Nigeria. It's a youth movement that it's going to be global which also impacts and affects those of us in the diaspora. Um, so throughout our conversation, we came up with the name New Nigeria Youth Movement. And the purpose of this movement is to distinguish the young people who are for peace, the young people who are nonviolent, and the young people who are really interested in creating a new economy, Nigeria. Um, and this movement would clearly distinguish who are for Nigeria against the hoodlums, which we're seeing now. Part of the problem we're seeing now, Dr. Steve, that there's, you know, as far as the leadership is concerned, all the youth are the same because people are burning up places. They're doing all manners of chaos. So the, the, the part of the agenda is that we are going to start a movement in every state. So even though there's going to be, let's say, one person to oversee the entire um, the entire movement, but from a local level on, in each state, there will be someone who oversees 
the, the, the things that are going on in respective states. Okay, so let's say in Abuja, for example, there will be a head coordinator who will be, you know, who, who will be leading that area in uh, or your state, in Lagos State. So that way, when it's time to vote, we have, we have, we have enough, we have one voice. When it's time to put people, we have one voice. Um, so that's pretty much the overall synopsis of what we did. But the goal is to make sure that we have at least 50 million Nigerians who's going to be part of 50 million youth in Nigeria that's going to be part of this movement. And when we have a movement, the government has no other choice than to listen. And more importantly, for us to start dictating how we want the country to be because we're operating under one voice. Um, so that's pretty much the overview. Um, we're still working on the logistics. We already have uh, you know, the, the domain name. We already have all the social media handles. So please, please get ready because this is going to be a very powerful movement. You know, many of you uh, might not know, understand the power of a movement, but here in America, in the 1960s, there was something we call the civil rights movement, all right? The civil rights movement is the, is the main reason why African Americans are enjoying what's happening in, in America today. All right, because they started a movement. So anytime there's a movement, that a change must come. All right, and I believe that this is the time uh, for a change in Nigeria, and it can only happen when there's a strong movement that young people can identify with. Um, so with that being said, you know, I'll turn it back to Dr. Stephen, and we'll be passing along any information as time goes on. Well, um, I I'm even shocked that. Uh... This man is having this conversation. He doesn't believe in politics. <laughs> he doesn't watch this. You know, but this is to tell you the kind of energy that this, this whole exercise has created. And he's based in Baltimore. He doesn't, even in America, he doesn't want to hear politics. He doesn't want to hear movement or anything. So creating a peaceful uh, um, you know civil civil peaceful civil movement is something shocking for me um, that uh, Deepo Adesina will be considering having that conversation but honestly um, this is what this whole thing has done to everybody's realizing that hey if we do not speak up right we will all be victims um, the, I mean, it's a shame that human life does not have value anymore in this part of the world. It's a shame. Um, it's really, really a shame. So, well, I hope it, I, I, I don't know why it's Ch um, Choma Edwin that is able to see the link. Choma Edwin, can you do me a favor of just posting the link for everybody to see? I've been trying to find a way to the WhatsApp group we've created. Um, go also on social media. I think Deepo has created uh, the link. You know, Deepo has also created um, social media handle called NNY Movement. NNY Movement across all social media handle. Um, so this movement is still going to have several aspects to it. We still have, it's still going to have uh, five different, um, different arms uh, or to this movement. There's still going to be an arm of the movement that is called uh, Landlord of the Street. Uh, there's also going to be another arm that is Landlord of, of Social Media. You know, so landlord of the streets are going to be the ones to go into the grassroots. Those they call talks, those they call, you know, find a way to educate, orientate these people. Landlord of social media, obviously, are going to be the ones who are social media influencers and warriors and things like that. Probably we have landlord of uh, celebrity landlords. Uh, Right, uh, who are just going to be celebrities, 
who will keep calling other celebrities to be involved, to, to speak um, and things like that. So um, we, we still have a lot to discuss and review. Nothing is cast in stone. These are just, we're just talking, right? Um, so, but, you know, we just feel at least let's start somewhere. Somebody said we should have brain landlords too. You know, I agree we should have, so you should have at least five arm, um, if not more. Um, like the brain landlord he's talking about, I agree absolutely. They can be the strategic arm um, of the movement. They just give us ideas. They, they are the tick tank strategy lords, you know. Uh, yes, <laughs> data collection landlord. <laughs> so another arm um, that focuses on data collection. We just don't have data of everybody their phone numbers, their details, who they are and all of that. So yeah, let's, let's, let's start a movement. Um, and, 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 and it's important, it's important. So um, let's join the, 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 the WhatsApp group, first of all, I think that's critical. Uh, once we join the WhatsApp group, we don't have a logo. Like I said, this, this is just a conversation Deepak called me uh, and like I said, I took him serious because I I used to call him. Do you know what has happened in the U.S.? Do you know Donald Trump? Do I said I'm not interested. You know, so for him to now be the one saying, you know what? Can we start a movement? I said that now. Oti Debe, like there's trouble now. I mean, for <laughs> at this point, <laughs> and it, it don't happen for for someone like this. To be. And I'm not surprised because Dr. Peba would too. I remember his daughter wouldn't come back to Nigeria. In fact, they came at some point, there was no electricity, and they vowed never to come to Nigeria again. So he said he was shocked how his daughter donated $120 to a feminist coalition. He was like, he was just wondering, how did you? But, you know, it's, it's, this is one movement that, trust me, has gone far and wide, far and wide. And there's just nothing anybody can do anymore to stop this. We have to change this country. We have to, we ain't gonna, um, you know, we ain't gonna. Well, again, if you join the group, somebody say implement security on the WhatsApp group so that we be hijacked. Well, once you join the WhatsApp group, give us the security now. Like we said, we don't, um we don't um you know we don't it's just let's even start with a name we still obviously need to think of you know other things so let's just join um the WhatsApp group let's start the conversation i think that's just what's important and those of you who have the group please send to people privately um send to them generally let's everybody have the group um, i've also put it on the whatsapp let's just discuss and just see okay but i agree that for now you know let's start a movement and this movement for me is to hold existing politicians accountable okay let's let's existing politicians accountable Okay, so all this we are waiting for 2023. We want it now. We want the change now. Uh, and honestly, for me, I will do tomorrow. I will make that a major conversation of our deliberation tomorrow. Major conversation. My own view tomorrow is on Monday. Let's turn where those judicial panel people are sitting. Okay, because they've been accusing young people for not showing up. Um, but the reality is that what they are, you know the the composition of those panels is not even showing that they really mean business for us first of all a youth should be a co-chair okay number two youth should be 50 50 you can't just put old people there again and you know and say um so for me this uh so tomorrow we're going to discuss that we're going to focus on the panel that has been created by government Okay, we're gonna discuss that. Um, the link, I'm trying to create a, can somebody help me create 
a customized URL link for the WhatsApp group so that I can put it on Facebook too. And if you can help us put that group on Facebook, those on Facebook have been asking also on YouTube at Stevactile TV. Uh, so at some point we may, you know, if we, if we all take the movement seriously, we, we may move all this conversation to the social media platform of the movement and, you know, and just do most of our shows there. So that because I'm a businessman, I still have business to run and I don't have intent to even go into politics in 2023. So, uh, so that my page doesn't turn to, <laughs> I still have to sell. You know, I'm not a career politician, so and I have people's salary to pay every month. So, um, you know, so it's good that we are giving this a name. You know, and things can start happening on that, on those platforms, and uh, that then helps us to achieve a lot more. Um, a big thank you to everybody who has been part of this. God bless you, real good. You guys are amazing. You know, um, you're amazing. And um, God bless you all. And a big thank you. Um, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you for all that. But God bless you. So we're, we now have... Um, a new URL, which is bit.ly slash NNYMGRP. Why not just do NNY movement? Mohammed, can you just make it a bit.ly link and just do bit.ly dot L-Y slash bit dot L-Y slash NNY movement. Can you let me create that? I think that's better for people to remember. Um, that's more better for people to remember. So that's a good one. Beautiful, so good. Thank you. So guys, on Facebook, the link to join the WhatsApp group is bits, that's B-I-T dot L-Y slash movement. Okay, B I T dot L Y slash movement. That's all. Okay, B Y T dot L Y slash movement. It's a global movement, so people from all over the world can join. Global movement. And like I said, this will start a new political party. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, those who, want, who have energy to start that and uh, we're going to give you all the support we, you need please go ahead by all means but we must hold these people accountable this current one let, let me shock you what happened in edo there was a town hall meeting with obasteki and you know he was so touched and you know what he said he said i promise you 40 percent of my new cabinet you know he just won the election with the young people he said i never knew we we're this far from you guys 40% of my new car. And that's all we're talking about. I, you know, that's what we're talking about. So because we know those young people now that he's going to put in cabinet, if they start misbehaving, can't we call them out? The problem is that the people, okay, the commissioner for Lagos State, I don't even know his name, the commissioner for transport, for information, I don't even know his name. Social media director for some, I don't even know his name. These are people who are not there. We don't know where they bring them from. I, I saw the Relu of Lagos was also saying the same thing. When we put people that don't have a face, nobody know them, go and check some of them. So, so I bet that the person who is handling social media, who is social media, whatever, to some Olu, I bet he doesn't have 50,000 people on the social media. So why we don't even know these people? Oh, yeah. That's the funny thing. So they, they pull up leaders, and that's why they, they are so far from us. This, these people are too far. Too far. Like, when we say far, they are way, way far. But with, with, uh, but with, with, once we build a movement that can hold people accountable, that we all begin to say, no, 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 we will not take this one. 
we call out government, we call out even those that are ministers, we call out these their people and say we did we deserve better leadership now. We deserve, I think that's what we should start with, right? Let's even force them now to start making changes. Look at how COVID-19 happened. I'm not if you agree with me that the healthcare system in Nigeria is not yet corrected. If you agree, type I agree. There is no move, right? COVID is gone like that. No genuine move to say we did, we failed to have good healthcare system. COVID-19 happened. Many of these politicians died because they couldn't travel abroad. But still, they are not changing anything in the healthcare sector, nothing. We will just all move on like that again. If another stronger COVID comes, kill all of us, we die there. So guys, we need to start having conversations. Our leaders must be accountable. Please, we need, we need youth from the North. We need youth from the North. We need youth from the North. So please share these links. Um, I want not, we can't, we can't change Nigeria without another. I was born in, in Medugu. And I know what the North represents. If you want change in Nigeria, listen, what happened in Lagos? If that momentum were to be in the North, there was no going back. Nigeria would have changed. I promise you. What happened? What happened? Because what, what, you know, the North is, Northerners are not that nice. They're, I mean, many of these people use religion to cage them. But if their eye is open, there's no turning back. You saw what led to Boko Haram. It was just killing one person though, that led to what you know as Boko Haram today. Killing one person in Meduguri was what led to Boko Haram. So if we, we, we're going to create a, a, a movement that is going to hold government accountable, we need the North. And we need the Northern youths involved. And we need to talk to ourselves. You know, we all, because these people are going to die very soon. That, or they're all going to die very soon. So is this what we're going to leave the country to, to? No. Love you all. Thank you so much for coming. Good night, everybody.